welcome you to another exciting time in the presence of the Lord. It's another beautiful day, a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful day, a day to bask in the glory, the presence, and the power of the Lord. It's a day that the Lord has counted us amongst the living. What a privilege, what an opportunity to be alive, to see all of the goodnesses and all of the mercies that God has made available, and not only to see, but also partake of it, to enjoy it, and to bask in all of the blessings, the splendor, and the favor that comes directly from God, our Savior, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you once again to another exciting time, another beautiful broadcast. I believe, God, that it's been well with you and it is well with you. I believe that it is well with your family. I believe that all that has to do with you is well. And I pray that your life will be, always be on that glorious path, that path, that path of greatness, that path of glory, that path of praise, that path of peace, that path of prosperity. Indeed, he said that you will make your way prosperous and that you will have a, a glorious future. I pray that that will be your testimony all the days of your life and that your lives, your life will be a testament to your generation in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll come to another uh, topic from this our month of stability. Last week we looked at stability through knowledge and today we'll be rounding up on a very vital topic. I suppose this will be the foundation and the, uh, the covering over all that we've been looking at since this month began because this topic is a crucial one the one that has to do with every area of our lives it has to do with our success our survival our victory our testimony and therefore a very important key that we can not ignore it is important so important that god himself has proclaimed it as a tool for our victory a tool for our relevance a tool for our success a tool for our salvation and many more. Now, we'll be looking at that topic by the grace of God. But before we go into the topic, I'd like us to pray, asking for God's illumination, direction, revelation, and asking Him to give us the door of utterance that His word may come expressly and that we might speak His word as the oracle of the living God. Father, we thank You. We thank You because Your mercy and grace abounds and abides with us. We thank You because out of the generosity of Your heart, You've made us see another day, to be a partaker of today, to open our eyes to the brightness and to behold the beauty of the sun and of the light. We thank you, Lord, that we are counted amongst the beloved. We thank you because it is you who has given us hope and a glorious future. Oh, the depth, both of the riches, both of the knowledge and wisdom of God, how unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. Out of your own way and out of your own goodness and out of your own judgment, you have counted us worthy to be alive, to be healed and hearty, and we thank you for all of the blessings and mercies that you have made available to us, the place, the palaciousness of the places you have, you have brought us, the sumptuousness of the food that you have placed on our table. Lord, the beauty and the splendor that surrounds us, the opportunity and the privileges that you have given us, Lord, we thank you for the health that we enjoy, the air we breathe, the mercies we enjoy, all the things that money cannot buy that you have so generously offered us, O oh Lord, on a platter, we thank you. We glorify your name. We ask, Lord, that today the, the door of utterance will be opened unto us, that we will speak as the oracle of God, and that the word will come with, them, with power, with illumination, and that it will search the inner parts of our hearts, and Lord, will bring to light all that, that is hidden and that needs to come to the light, and that when we come to the light, you will heal us. You will perfect us and you will manifest your presence and your power in our lives. We pray, O oh God, that even today your spirit will come alive as always in us, through us, by us, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your angels that are always on guard. Thank you for the spirit that brings us illumination, wisdom, knowledge and understanding. And above all, thank you for the blood that rescued us from the shackles of sin and brought us into the light of glory and to that redemptive, creative power. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I welcome you once again, and I believe, God, that today will be a day of testimony, a day of breakthrough, and a day of victory. Today, I will, we'll be looking at 
Our topic for today will be prayer, a veritable tool for stability. Prayer, a veritable tool for stability. All of the things that we began to talk about since the month began about you know, stability, how we are true faith, we are stable, true knowledge, we are stable. All of that has no permanent effect without the instrument of prayer. Prayer is the foundation and the conclusion of all of our Christian adventure. Prayer is the key, the master key to the to the door of our deliverance, our success, our testimony. Prayer is the connection that puts all of the bits and pieces of our lives together. Prayer is the cohesive force of our destiny. Prayer is the determiner of our future. You can't, prayer is the air we breathe. Prayer is the food we eat. Prayer is the supplier of the strength we need. Without prayer, we are, cannot conclusively say that we are Christian. Prayer is the key to our destiny. Prayer is the determiner of our future. It is everything and it is the only key that makes all of the bits and pieces of our lives meaningful, triumphant, and victorious. So to live a prayerless life is to live in the realms of, to be in the state of limbo. To pray, to live a prayerless life, to not have a life, a prayer life, to not have a means of communication. Now, what prayer does is, first of all, we must understand that prayer is the communication between man and God. It is the connection between the physical, between the mundane and the celestial. It is the, the connecting cord between man and God. It is the avenue by which God himself has implemented and given to man as a means of reaching him and communicating with him. So God says that prayer is what I am giving you as a tool for you to access the spiritual realm. Prayer is that, that communication. Prayer is that confession. Prayer is that supplication. Prayer is that petition. Prayer is that beseeching. Prayer is that place of pleading. Prayer is that place of interaction. Prayer, prayer is that place of commitment. Prayer is what creates for us is a platform upon which to communicate with God. And that's why prayer is the most vital key for the stability of our lives. Indeed, there is no stability without prayer. We cannot be truly said to have an effective spiritual Christian life if prayer is not a part of our existence. It is the key, the master key to the determining of our destiny and the, the decider of our future. To live a life without prayer is to live a life of nothingness. It's to not enjoy the benefit, the blessings, the victory, the testimony, and above all, the communication that God so earnestly desires to have with us. Prayer is that key that establishes a relationship and communication and messaging between man and God. And so God takes prayer very vital, very critical, very important. And the first thing God establishes with, him, with any believer is that you pray unto him. Indeed, he says that nothing can be done in heaven concerning us without prayer. You remember in Matthew 18, he said, If two of you shall agree concerning anything, it shall be done of my Father which is in heaven. If two of you shall agree, how? In prayer. He said, If two of you shall agree concerning anything, it shall be done of my Father. If you shall say, if he says, If two of you shall, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Did you see that? So prayer is what creates a, an activity on our behalf in the heavenly realms. Prayer is what ascends and bypasses all of, the, all of these structures, invisible and visible, and per permeates into the realms of heaven. It is what comes. You know, prayer is so powerful because God takes the prayer of the saints and mingles it with the praises and God... Um, God sniffs the prayer of the saints, if you like. The Bible says in heaven, it says, and there was silence in heaven for a space of 30 minutes. 
And whilst that silence was going on, the prayer of the saints were collected. So each time there is prayer going on, each time men are sh- crying unto God, each time men are calling unto God, each time people are calling and believing God, and in the corner, it could be in the corner of their homes, it could be in the church, it could be in their kitchen, it could be in their bedroom, it could be on their knees, it could be on their way, it could be the way to work. As long as there is a prayer in our hearts and prayer from our lips, there is a connectivity that is established that permeates into heaven and it is mingled with this praises with the sacrifice and with the worship going on in heaven. So God mingles our prayers with the sense and and the censer and God and it swings and each time it swings and that aroma springs up to heaven to to the press to the throne room God sniffs our prayers. God in, takes in our prayers. God hears our prayers and that prayer is answered because when God hears God performs when God hears, God performs. When God hears, God will do. So prayer is the way to which, by which we turn the clock of our lives in the favor towards, the, towards favoring our destiny. Jesus, so powerful is prayer that Jesus could not live without prayer. Jesus, God himself, had to pray always. In fact, Jesus admonished us in Luke 18 verse 1. He said, men. I mean, Jesus could have said, look, I'm God. I don't need to pray. But Jesus prayed more than any other man. Jesus prayed more than any other man when he was here, when he was here on earth. The Bible says he prayed continuously. He prayed ceaselessly. He says, men ought always to pray. Did you see that? Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. And not to faint. Prayer is never too much. Prayer is the key to the delivery of our destiny. Prayer is the key to the actualization of our future. Prayer is the key to the attainment of that splendorous height, that place of honor and dignity, that place of power and glory. It is through prayer that we access heaven and all of the blessings and attributes that makes for our life and for our godliness. It is prayer that transforms us. It is prayer that transmogrifies us to that place of dignity and honor, a place of rest and power. Prayer is what creates intervention on our behalf. The Bible says, and when they began to praise him, and they prayed, they prayed and they praised. Paul said, you remember the, the, the Paul's encounter in Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, when he was locked up in jail, and the Bible said they prayed. And when they began, they prayed, and after praying, they began to sing praises. The prayer that they prayed created for them a pathway for their praises to be answered. You know what? Prayer goes ahead of us and makes the crooked places straight. Prayer goes ahead of us and creates a platform for us to land. Prayer creates a pathway for our answer, our prayers to be answered, for our desires and our petitions and our longings to be answered. Prayer creates for us the pathway for the delivery of of our desires. So Paul said, the Bible says, and when they began to pray, Acts of the Apostles 16, he said they began to pray, they prayed, and they sang praises to God. And when they began to sing praises, God, then he says there was an earthquake. That the prayer had gone ahead of them to create for them a release of supernatural empowerment the prayer had gone ahead their prayers had gone, had gone ahead to create for them a platform for success and triumph the prayer their prayers had gone ahead of them to create for them a destiny and a future their prayer had gone ahead of them to create for them liberty and redemption and when god heard the prayer and the prayer mingled with praise god could not wait he sent forth his angels, and from there, you know, when the Bible says the earth is, it says that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. When they prayed to God, and God heard the, heard the prayer of the saints mingled with the sacrifice in heaven, God sniffed their prayer and God said, Who's calling me? And when God stood, and the Bible says, You know, the earth is his footstool, when God began to shake his feet, the earth began to move. Paul, the Bible says, there was earthquake in that jail. And the prison doors were open and their chains fell off. But the, you remember that the, the beginning of their exploit was via the instrument of prayer. It's my prayer that your prayer 
will be answered by the undeniable hand of Jehovah. It's my prayer that your life will be a symbol of a prayerful life. It's my prayer that your life will be a testament of a man and a woman committed to beseeching the face of God. The only means by which we beseech the face of God is via the instrument of prayer. He said, I beseech thee, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. I beseech thee, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. No matter how tight the situations are, no matter how terrible the circumstance may be, you remember when you pray, God hears. And when God hears, God will send help from his sanctuary. David said, now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. How? Through the instrument of prayer. He said, I prayed unto the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me out of all my troubles. Psalm 34 verse 4. I prayed unto the Lord. This poor man cried and the Lord heard and delivered me out of all my troubles. He said, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. His eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. So God is always, ex God is always expectant. God is always waiting to, for you to call upon him. He said, call upon me and I will answer thee. Jeremiah 33. Is indeed, God himself instituted that. He said, when, he said go, and you go and pray unto me. And when ye pray unto me, you go and call unto me. Proverbs, uh, Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, you shall go and call unto me. And I will answer thee. And I will show thee great and mighty things that you know not. You can see the, the morrow of your life. You can see the future and your destiny. You can see all of it play out in, before your presence, even before you get there through the instrument of prayer. You remember Daniel? In Daniel, Daniel said when he began to pray and then God began to show him revelation. When he began to pray, the angel Gabriel came unto him and said, Daniel, highly favored of God, see, and he began to show him the things to come. Prayer is the key to dominion. Prayer is the access to tomorrow. Prayer is the establishment of our relationship Prayer is the strengthener of our destiny. Prayer is the is the the, the 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 determiner of our future. Prayer is what seals our relationship with God and with all of the arsenals. All of the blessings, the gift of the Spirit, the the, the fruit of the Spirit cannot be actualized without this instrument of prayer. All of the gift of healing and power, miracles and speaking in tongues, all hinges on the ability to pray. To God because it is the prayer that releases the blessings it is the prayer that makes happen all that we desire Jesus said when men ought to pray always always means always always means every time always means all the time men ought always to pray and not to faint it says when ye pray do you know uh, Jesus was praying in Luke 11 verse 1 and the Bible says when he was praying and when he finished praying one of the disciples came to him and said master teach us to pray and Jesus said when ye pray not if ye pray prayer is not optional prayer is compulsory prayer is not a substitute prayer is the core prayer is not what we can do without we can do you know we can like, neglect we can do without prayer is what makes us relevant important and creates a constant recognition of our future and our destiny prayer is what registers our voice in heaven the bible says it says i would my ears are open unto their prayer and the eyes of the lord watches over us he says and my ears are open unto the prayers of the righteous it is prayer that keeps us relevant in the things of god and in the kingdom it is prayer that that allows our voices to be heard in heaven you know the bible says and as they began to praise him god sent ambushment against their enemies prayer is what gives us a platform to be heard in heaven and when god hears he says when you call i will hear and i will hear i will deliver you i will set you free when you call upon my name he says when you call upon me i will hear you and i will save you and i will deliver you and i will set you free you know, in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul talked about arming ourselves, strengthening ourselves with, the, with spiritual weaponry. He says, put on the element of salvation. 
uh, guard your feet with the gospel of the sh shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace uh, put on the element of salvation put on uh, have the sword, sword of the spirit which is the word of god and above all uh, put on the element of salvation it says put on put on it says put on the the garment of praise you know so so but it concluded by saying in verse 18 Ephesians 6 18 that I'm praying with all prayer and supplication praying with all prayer and supplication that means it is prayer that makes all of those spiritual weaponry work for us we can put on the element of salvation it says put on above all put taking all the shield of the shield of faith where which you'll be able to quench all the fiery dirt faith cannot work effectively without prayer prayer is what makes faith effective the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man faith cannot work without prayer that's why james said in james chapter 5 and from verse uh, 13 he said is any sick is any afflicted let him pray do you see that is any afflicted let him pray because prayer releases the affliction and gives us solution to the plight of our lives is any afflicted let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms and then he said is any sick among you so sicknesses and diseases bow to the lordship of prayer he says is any sick among you let them call upon the elders of the church let them pray over him anointing him with oil with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick the prayer of faith so faith requires prayer in order for it to be factual he says and the prayer of faith will save the sick and if he had committed any sin it shall be forgiven him and then he says confess your fault one to another and pray one for another that he may be healed and then he said one of the most important one of the most vital uh, statement concerning prayer he said that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much and he said give an example of elijah he says elijah was a man subject it was a man did you see that elijah was a man have all of the frailties and all of the and all of the things that we have as no as humans elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are yet he prayed that it should not rain for three and a half years and it rained not and then he prayed again and then the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth their fruit you see the power of prayer prayer stopped the rain prayer released the rain that's how powerful our prayer life is when we come to the point where our prayers become effectual and fervent god hears amplified version says that the prayer our prayers are dynamic and tremendous in power the powerful prayer that we pray can stop the mouth of lions can stop the fiery furnace can stop the whirlwind the prayer that we pray can part the red sea the prayer that we pray can heal the, the sick can raise the dead jesus was fervent in prayer jesus was constant in prayer he says fervent in spirit serving the lord romans 12 he says fervent in spirit serving the lord fervent in spirit serving the lord the way to be to show for our father in spiritual reality is through the instrument of prayer fervent in spirit serving the lord how do we serve the lord prayerfully we supplicate we prayerfully beseech him we prayerfully plead before him and god hears our prayer when a man goes on his knees and bows to god in prayer he never bows to man when a man bows on goes on his knees to honor and to worship god no man can make a mockery of his destiny when a man honors god through prayer his future is undeniable his success is cannot be hindered when a man is constantly in prayer his future becomes glorious jesus was fervently praying all of throughout his ministry throughout jesus's ministry he was fervent in prayer he was effectual in prayer and no wonder we saw the signs the testimony 
Jesus never did anything of prominence without first praying. When he wanted to choose his disciples, he first went away and prayed. Long before the apostles wake, Jesus went away to pray in a secluded place. Every pray, Jesus lived a prayerful life, a life of dependence on prayer, and no wonder his testimonies were undeniable. His exploits were on, on you know, you know, were, were amazing and, and, and dynamic and tremendous because Jesus took time. God himself took time. If Jesus took time to pray, how much more do you need time to call upon your Savior, to call upon divine help, and to call upon divine assurance, to call upon divine assistance, and to call upon divine empowerment. You, When you pray, what you're doing is connecting to God for divine empowerment, divine uh, uh, backings, divine uh, uh, release, for supernatural uh, uh, reality to occur in your life. All of the gifts of life that God gives us are embedded and entrenched by the, by the key, by the instrument of prayer. I pray God Almighty that your life will be embedded in prayer. Paul said, be instant in season, out of season. Do the work of an evangelist. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always. Paul said, in 2 Thessalonians 5, he says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. If the great prophets of old prayed, Moses was a prayer warrior, Jeremiah was a prayer warrior, Ezekiel was a prayer warrior, Uzziah was a prayer warrior, uh, Esther was a prayer warrior, uh, Ruth was a prayer warrior, uh, Jerem uh, 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 David was a prayer warrior, you know, all of the great prophets, if they prayed, Joshua, if they prayed and had all of their dependence was on prayer and in God, how much more do you need to pray? I pray God that you will catch that revelation and make life, prayer, your prayer life a time of amazing wonderment between you and your Creator. That your voice also will be heard in heaven. That every day your cry is heard, your voice is heard, and your Savior will come and show you mercy. In Hosea chapter 3, let me close with that. Hosea chapter 3 and from verse 6, it says, And the heavens, and God will hear the heavens. And God will hear the heavens. And the heavens will hear the earth. And the earth will hear the wine, and the oil, and the vine, and the, and the corn. So that God will hear the heavens, the heavens will, he, will hear the earth. The earth will hear the corn and the wine and the oil. Did you see that? So God will hear the heavens. The heavens will hear the earth. When you cry unto God, the heavens will hear you. And see the way that it functions, that the sequence. God hears the heaven. The heaven hears the earth. The earth will hear the ground. And that is the way it flows. When we cry to God, the earth will hear, the heavens will hear, God will hear, and God will send down this response via the same sequence. So if you are not a prayer, if you are not praying, or you don't have a prayer life, how does that, you've broken that sequence, and it is the sequence that guarantees the flow, the fluidity, and the success of our lives. And when that flow is not in existence, what a mystery our lives become. Our life becomes meaningless, and unfruitful. But when we are fervent in prayer, when we are pursuing in prayer, when we are dependent on prayer, and as we pray, the Bible says God will do the miraculous. It's my prayer that your life will be a life of miracles, a life of testimonies, a life of breakthroughs. And all that is possible when you realize that on your knees, great things can be accomplished by him who has instituted it, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you your own inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. Until next week and next time, next month, the month of March, I pray God that you have a wonderful week. And as you ease and God eases us into the new month, I pray that the month will yield for you 
plenteousness of corn, plenteousness of wine, plenteousness of oil, whatever that signifies in your life, I know that it means flourishing, it means prosperity, it means success. That the heavens will hear the earth, the earth will hear the corn and the wine, God will hear all of us and do the miraculous. God bless you and have a marvelous week and bask in the glory and praise and prayer of the Most High God. God bless you and goodbye.